Are you an experienced diver? How many dives do you have? How long have you been diving? What certification level do you have? Well, what if I told you that none of that actually matters without context? So what really makes an experienced diver? Well, let's get into it. Let me start off by saying that I don't mean to offend anyone at all, but there are many experienced divers out there, including instructors and even some people you see here on YouTube that could really do with taking a bite of humble pie. To be an experienced diver can really mean a lot of different things, but let me call out a few of them that don't matter at all in my opinion, unless you have additional context to support it. And before you come after me in the comments, I'll state what I feel my own personal level of experience is a little bit later in the video, so stick around for it. How long you've been certified. Now this one really gets me, but when someone says that they've been diving for 5, 10, 15, or even 30 years, they then tell me that they are very, very experienced because of how long they've been diving. But are they really? Let me put it to you this way. If you were certified 30 years ago, but you only do 5 dives a year, maybe on the one trip that you take each year, are you really that experienced? Or what if you were certified 30 years ago, but you haven't gotten in the water to do a dive in the last 10 years? Are you really still experienced? If it's really been that long, how familiar are you still with your gear, with diving, with signals and safety and things that people do nowadays that maybe 10 years ago we weren't doing? Now, depending on who you are, this might have either really upset you and you're angrily writing in the comments now, or you might be laughing about this and think that something like this just doesn't happen. But it's actually something that I see quite often where someone maybe hasn't been in the water for five, 10, 15 years, and they're taking a refresher class, which is the proper thing to do. And I have no problem with that. Take a refresher class, get up to speed, get familiar with your gear again, and then get back in the water safely. My point is, if that is someone is diving that infrequently, they probably are not that experienced anymore because they just don't dive often enough to really have a level of experience. How many dives you have? Now, this one kind of goes hand in hand with the previous one, but I personally don't really care how many total dives you have as the only statement of your level of experience. Let's take a look at our buddy, the diver who was certified 30 years ago and has five dives a year. What if we took another diver who was certified only three years ago, but they have done 50 dives or more every single year. Now, if you do the math, both divers have 150 total dives, which is great. But I would argue that the diver that's done 50 dives or more every year for three years is gonna have a little bit more experience than the diver who's been diving for 30 years, but only does five dives a year. But Honestly, even that isn't the whole story of what makes an experienced diver. Now, yes, how long you've been diving combined with your total number of dives and how frequently you dive does matter. And that all is part of how experienced you are, but there is more to it. But before I move on, if you're finding this video valuable or entertaining, consider subscribing to see more content like this. But with that, let's get back into it. What certifications you have. Some divers love to talk about the total number of certification cards they have or the highest level of certification they have. And it's especially fun when someone tells me that they were a dive instructor 10 plus years ago and therefore they are very, very experienced. The best one is when they say they are a PADI master scuba diver or the equivalent of that in another agency. And that right there tells me that they are a very experienced diver because that is the top level of recreational diving certification that you can get. But unfortunately, these certifications levels don't necessarily mean that you are experienced. Again, I mean no disrespect at all because hey, maybe you really are experienced and these are not mutually exclusive and I know I have people in the comments that are former instructors or current instructors and I'm not trying to diss anyone at all. I'm having a little bit of fun with it, but some people do come around and I'm, I'm sure you've met them yourselves if you've been in the diving industry for a while and they'll say they were an instructor 20 years ago and they know everything about it, but they haven't even been in the water for the last 10 to 15 years. They're inactive, not teaching anymore and Standards change and update and things change over time. Some things stay the same, some things change, and your level of experience might be a little different if you were teaching 10, 15 years ago versus someone that's teaching actively now. For me personally, I think it's a combination of all of these things we've talked about so far, as well as a few additional things that truly make an experienced diver. Environment and combining your experiences. Okay, so at this point, you're probably saying, what actually makes an experienced diver? Since I'm picking apart all the ways people usually track their level of experience. Well, in my honest opinion, it's a combination of what level of certification you have, how long you've been diving, how many total dives you've had, how often you dive, and then most importantly, 
how many dives you have with the gear configuration you're about to dive with and the environmental conditions that you're about to dive in. Wait, what? You're telling me that the 1000 quarry dives that I've done doesn't make me an experienced diver? Well, not exactly. You are probably a very experienced diver when it comes to that specific quarry, knowing it inside and out, regardless of the conditions that can happen all year round, whether it's a little bit colder, a little bit darker, a little bit warmer, and for the gear configuration or configurations you've used within that quarry. But with just those 1000 quarry dives and no other experiences, you probably aren't that experienced with something like drift diving when you have strong currents out in the ocean, or maybe just ocean diving in general, where maybe you'll struggle with navigation and getting back to the mooring line because it's just kind of an open area rather than the confined space that you're used to. You would probably also struggle inside of caves or inside of wrecks because it's just something that you haven't had as much experience with, though I will say some quarries do have little cave outlets, and then of course there's cavern portions in some of those, and there are some wrecks too. But let's just say you have a thousand quarry dives and you haven't dove anywhere else for some reason. Maybe you've never experienced a drift ever in your life and you just are not very experienced with that. Now, sure, of course, some things are gonna translate over, like a thousand dives in the quarry versus the ocean or anything like that, your buoyancy is gonna be a lot better than someone that doesn't have that many dives, of course. Your air consumption is gonna be way better as well and fitting techniques will be great too. But again, remember we're kind of equating the experiences here and if you've only dove single tank back mount in a quarry a thousand times, that doesn't necessarily mean you're an experienced side mount diver. You're not an experienced cave diver. You're not an experienced wreck diver, ocean diver, drift diver, etc. Those conditions can make things very, very different underwater, depending on the exact environment that you're in, the gear configuration, etc. Let me put it another way, and I'll turn the target on myself as promised. I personally hold a dry suit certification. Does that make me an experienced dry suit diver? Well, I have hundreds of dives under my belt. I dive very, very often throughout the year. I've been inside of wrecks, as well as in multiple lakes and quarries. I've taken multiple trips down to Mexico, where I've dove both on the west coast and the Sea of Cortez, as well as down in the Caribbean side of the Yucatan Peninsula. I've dove within the cenotes and done cavern diving there. I've been inside multiple types of wrecks, both larger and smaller. I've done drift diving in Cozumel, as well as dealt with really strong drifts off the coast of North Carolina, where not to mention we've had 10 foot swells off of very high boats that we had to do uh, deep water entries into, where we just descended very quickly down to 100 plus feet so we can get to the wreck site, stay for a few minutes, hit our NDL, and start heading our way back up. I've also taken multiple trips to multiple different islands in the Caribbean, where I've done a lot of warm water tropical diving. I've even recently taken a trip to Bonaire, where I did multiple deep technical stops with multiple deco bottles while I was in the side mount configuration. I've been diving for a few years, I'm an open water scuba instructor, and I'm in the water again multiple times a month. So with all of those experiences under my belt, am I an experienced dry suit diver? Well, no. No, I am not. I am not an experienced dry suit diver, not yet. Almost all of the dives that I just described were done with a recreational single tank back mount in a wetsuit or honestly just a rash guard and board shorts outside of the technical dives that I mentioned. Because of this, they were not done with a dry suit. So all of that experience doesn't really count for my dry suit diving. Now, even if I did do all of these hundreds of dives in all these different locations in my dry suit, rather than doing a rash guard and swim trunks or, you know, just like a thin wetsuit or something like that, I would still say that I am not always going to be an experienced dry suit diver, or maybe I'm not an experienced dry suit diver at all. I might be an experienced dry suit diver with single tank back mount in warm water conditions, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm experienced as dry suit in cold water conditions. Or what if I change my gear configuration and I'm in side mount instead of recreation? recreational back mount, or maybe I'm in back mounted doubles instead. These gear configurations cause different routings for hoses, so your side mount could have a separate inflator hose for your dry suit, for example, that you need to kind of figure that out a little bit, and your gear assembly is slightly different. Some of the procedures you would need if you had to rearrange gear, you have an extra line coming across for your dry suit now. I'm not saying that nothing translates over, but there are differences here, and I would argue that I'm not that experienced with my dry suit. And again, even with hundreds of dives, if I did do all of those in my dry suit, it still wasn't with my side mount kit. So as soon as I put on that side mount kit, I'm now an inexperienced dry suit diver with that specific configuration. Okay, so with all of that said, let's move back to the original question. What makes an experienced diver? Or perhaps another question, are you an experienced diver? 
let me know your thoughts down below. And maybe you are an experienced diver with certain configurations, conditions, etc. Or maybe you think I'm totally wrong and you are always an experienced diver. Or hey, maybe you can admit like me that you are inexperienced with certain things and that is totally fine. We are always learning new things in diving. Again, for me, experience comes with how long you've been diving, how often you dive, and then how often you dive the specific gear configuration and what environments you've been diving in as well with those configurations, because things can just change so much more. If you're diving off the Galapagos or off the coast of North Carolina with 10 foot swells or in Australia, or you're in Iceland, or you're down in Canada diving in the Great Lakes, for example, versus being down in tropical water, whether it's in Hawaii or in the Caribbean or something like that, these are all different environments that are a different style of diving. And your experience is going to vary based on if you've actually dove that type of diving or not. Knowing your gear inside and out, being familiar with various environmental conditions, doing a lot of dives in these different conditions and configurations all combine to make you an experienced diver. Now, if you're watching this video and you're saying, okay, well, it's been a while since I've been back in the water, I need to get back to it myself so I can become an experienced diver. Don't worry, it's not that big of a deal. There are refresher classes like Discover Scuba Diving that you can take. And if you click or tap the screen now, you'll get taken to a scuba refresher playlist that will go over all the basic skills that you learned in your open water class, like mass clearing, rig recovery, et cetera, so you can refresh yourself before you go back to your class. Click or tap the screen now to check that out. And with that, stay safe, have fun, and let's go diving.